Okay, we will make a start now. So welcome everyone to our GCSE biology lesson. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at mitosis. Now this topic was requested by someone and as I've pasted the link in the Q&A, you can request a topic yourself that you would like us to go through in our weekly GCSE biology lessons. Okay, all you need to do is fill out the form and there's no the topic. As I said, someone chose mitosis and that's why we're going through mitosis in today's lesson. Okay, remember if you have any questions, you can let me know through the Q&A. Okay, so if we make a start now, mitosis. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at chromosomes. Then we're gonna shift on to what mitosis actually is and then we're going to be looking at the stages of mitosis. Now, the stages of mitosis is a topic which is very ignored by many students, and that's why it picks them out in the next exam. OK, so we're going to focus on the stages of mitosis as it's a popular exam question. OK. So, chromosomes, we're going to start off by looking at chromosomes. Now, chromosomes, it's what is contained in the nucleus. Okay, so chromosomes, they are contained in the nucleus. And they contain the DNA. And remember DNA is held on genes and it determines what we actually look like and the characteristics we have. Okay, so DNA is held on genes and determines the characteristics we have. OK, so that's what DNA actually is. So basically, we've just had an overview of chromosomes. Now, the nucleus of a cell contains chromosomes made of DNA molecules. Each chromosome carries many genes. OK, so we've got the nucleus. Then we've got the chromosomes. Then we've got the genes. Then we've got the DNA. OK. Now the DNA is held within the nucleotides of the genes. OK, so as I said, chromosomes are held within the nucleus of the cell and it contains the DNA and the DNA is held in genes which determines the characteristics we have. Now, a normal human body cell has 46 chromosomes. OK, so a normal human body cell has 46 chromosomes. So normal body cell has 46 chromosomes. And as you can see here, in body cells, the chromosomes are found in pairs. OK, so we have a total of 46 chromosomes. That means we have 23. We have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now, this is for a normal body cell, and these cells are called diploid cells. And you can see from the word, it has di in it, and that means pair. It has 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now, we also have another type of chromosome, and that is known as a haploid cell. Haploid cells contain only 23 chromosomes, and in human cells, they are known as the sex cells. Okay? The sex cells known as the sperm or the egg 
okay, they have a total of 23 chromosomes. They have a total of 23 chromosomes and they are known as haploid cells. Okay, so remember di means pair, diploid cells have 23 pairs of chromosomes and then the sex cells such as sperm and egg cells have 23 chromosomes in total. Okay, and they are known as haploid cells. Okay, so if we summarize off this slide, chromosomes are contained within the nucleus and they contain the DNA which is held on genes and it determines the characteristics that we have. Okay, a normal body cell has 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 chromosomes in total, and it's known as a diploid cell. Remember, di means pairs. That's why it has 23 pairs of chromosomes. And the other cells are called haploid cells. Now, haploid cells in the human body, we only have the sex cells. These are known as the sperm and the egg, and they have 23 chromosomes in total. However, in body cells, in normal body cell, they are normally found in pairs. And the only exception is sex cells, where they are haploid, they have 23 chromosomes in total. Okay, so we've just had a look at chromosomes there. If we now move on to cell division by mitosis okay now cell division as you can see from the word cell division is when the cell divides okay so we have we have one cell such as this this is our cell one this will divide into two cells such as this and this and then these two will divide into two more cells. So one, two, and this one will divide into another two. Okay, this is what cell division is. Cell division is when the cells divide. Okay, now in the human body, cell division mainly occurs by mitosis. OK, and in a later unit, you look at mitosis and meiosis and compare the difference. But in today's lesson, we're just going to concentrate on mitosis. OK, now mitosis is a form of cell division and it's very common through the human body. And we need cell division by mitosis. Because we need it to grow. OK, it helps us with growth and development of multicellular organisms. So in other words, how we have evolved from a child to an adult is by mitosis. Mitosis is the replicating of body cells. OK, so it's the replicating. Of body cells. So let's say when we were um, in the mother's womb, we would have had only we would have started off with only one cell. OK, this cell would then have divided into this. And then these two cells would have divided into this. And then these cells would have divided into more cells. So overall, we would have had identical cells. So and many of them, such as this, I'm drawing a really rough model here. So such as this, we would have had more and more and more cells building up. And all of these are identical cells. OK, build it. They build up continuously, build up, build up, build up until we get to what we are now. Yeah, so these are identical cells. Produced. By. Mitosis, so mitosis produces identical copies of cells. OK, and they continue to build up and then they form what we have today. Now, after we will look at this in a later sort of session, but these cells are not all the same. 
they start off all the same and then some of them become specialized okay so later on some cells become specialized so examples of specialized cells we have loads of them in our body so we have red blood cells nerve cells muscle cells and we have loads more okay so these are just some examples of specialized cells there so just remember our body uses mitosis for cell division and uh, it's one of the two so it's, we've got cell division by mitosis and cell division by meiosis now meiosis tends to occur with the sex cells but don't confuse yourself with meiosis at the moment we're looking at mitosis right now now cell division by mitosis produces identical cells so all of these cells are identical and then they go to become specialized later on in their development now let's say we fall down and get hurt somewhere mitosis occurs so let's say we fall down we lose a lot of blood okay now how is the body going to repay that blood back into the body that it's lost to the environment well mitosis will happen the red blood cells will then divide by mitosis it's a rapid process it will continue dividing until all the blood have, has been um has come back into the body and there's enough blood to patch up the sort of um bruise that you've got okay and that's how you sort of um you sort of come out of these uh, difficulties let's say you fall down you've ripped a piece, a piece of your uh, sort of skin that skin comes back by mitosis because your cells are dividing continuously it might take a few days or so because cells are really tiny but it will eventually come back because mitosis obviously keeps occurring and it will keep occurring at a faster rate and then it will patch up the skin which has been lost okay so that's cell division by mitosis now to end the session we're going to be looking at the stages of mitosis and this is a common exam question normally it comes up as a four marker in an exam okay so we're going to start off by looking at stage one stage one includes internal replication so we we don't get onto mitosis till stage two okay so stage one so we're actually looking at the cell cycle here stage one is known as internal replication okay so stage one is known as internal replication and just by looking at this phrase you can probably tell what's going on in it increase in the number of subcellular structures now subcellular just means um structures which are inside the cell so structures inside the cells which is the mitochondria ribosomes okay so internal replication is when the increase uh, when there is an increase in the number of subcellular structures such as ribosomes and mitochondria the dna replicates to form two copies of each chromosome let's say we had a cell here this is a normal body cell okay we have the nucleus we have mitochondria we have the ribosomes we have the cytoplasm cell membrane and we have the chromosomes inside the nucleus this is a normal body cell now when this is about to carry out mitosis it needs to replicate everything inside it so there's enough for both cells so the cell will grow it will become larger now the nucleus i've only drawn one core one pair of chromosome there so um, because uh, there's not there's not enough space here so i'm going to draw two pairs just to show it's double so the chromosomes double okay i've drawn so the ribosomes also multiply 
just going to draw a lot of them. So all these internal structures are multiplying. And then the mitochondria will also multiply. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. OK, so as you can see, this is internal replication. So as you can see, the cell has grown and the internal structures have multiplied. OK, so the DNA has formed two copies of each chromosome. So DNA has formed two copies of each chromosome. Internal structures, other internal structures such as the mitochondria and ribosomes have also multiplied. And as you can see, the cell has become larger. OK, so that's stage one of mitosis. Internal replication, just remember this keyword internal replication and then you will be fine with this stage. OK, so we've turned from a normal body cell to internal replication. The cell has become larger. There's two copies of each chromosome and the internal structures have multiplied. OK, now if we move on to stage two, in stage two, mitosis occurs at this point here. OK, one set of chromosome is pulled to each end of the cell and the nucleus divides. OK, so we had that original cell. Now I'm not going to draw the original cell out again. I'm just going to draw the nucleus of the cell. OK, so let's say we had the nucleus. I've drawn it big so you can see it in more detail. So this is the nucleus of the cell that I've drawn there. Now, originally, if I draw a smaller version here, Originally, we had the chromosomes like this. OK, I've just drawn four pairs there. Now, when mitosis occurs, one set of chromosome is pulled to each end of the cell and the nucleus divides. So as you can see, we have pairs here. Now the chromosomes will go like this. OK, so as you can see, they have been pulled to each end of the cell. The pairs of chromosomes have been separated and they have been pulled towards opposite ends of the cell. OK, in a real fact, you don't have four pairs of chromosomes. You have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So this happens 23 times. So you would have a line of chromosomes in the center, 23 um, rows and then and then one pair, well, one chromosome from each pair will be pulled to opposite end and will go like this. And the nucleus divides. So if I just show the nucleus dividing, it will probably just be like this. OK, so the nucleus is dividing and the chromosomes have been pulled to opposite ends of the cells. OK, so if I just write the chromosomes, have been pulled to opposite ends of the cell. OK, and as you can see there, and then you can also see that the nucleus divides. So that's stage two. And stage two, the key word you need to remember is mitosis. If you remember mitosis, just remember chromosomes. OK, we've, so we've looked at chromosomes and mitosis in today's lesson. So stage two is everything we've looked at in today's lesson. We saw that stage one is internal replication. Stage two is mitosis and chromosomes. 
Now the final stage of, my, uh, of this cell cycle is when finally the cell membrane and the cytoplasm divide to form two identical cells. Okay, so again, let's say we had our sort of cell before. We had our nucleus dividing here. Okay, so this is our nucleus dividing. We had more internal structures. I've just drawn six mitochondria and ribosomes. So our internal structures have multiplied. So stage three is only ready when mitosis has occurred, meaning the chromosomes have been pulled to opposite ends of the um, nucleus. It only occurs when the nucleus has divided and it only occurs when internal replication has taken place. Okay. Without these three things, the stage three cannot go ahead. Now, what happens at stage three? Well, the cell membrane and the cytoplasm finally divide. Okay, so first of all, if I show it like this, so this is the whole cell view now. Okay, so this is the whole cell. We have two nucleuses now. We've got the mitochondria and we've got the ribosomes. Okay, so this is the whole cell is dividing. The whole cell is dividing. And then finally, we get two identical cells. Okay, so these are two identical cells formed. Okay, and each of them will have a nucleus with the chromosome, equal amounts of mitochondria, and equal amounts of ribosomes okay so as you can see these are two identical cells which have been formed okay and that's the sort of process of mitosis the last stage just remember that you're splitting off in the last stage so the bigger structures cell membrane and cytoplasm they divide and then they form two identical cells. Okay, so that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Remember, if there's any topics that you are struggling with in your sort of like learning, individual learning, you can let me know by filling out the form which I've pasted in the Q&A. And before you guys go, if you would like to thank us or supporters for producing these free GCSE educational sessions, then you can buy us a coffee using the link I've pasted in the Q&A as well. Remember, it takes a lot of work and determination to produce these lessons, so we would really appreciate it if you would be able to buy us a coffee as a way of saying thank you. If you have any questions, I'm going to stay on now for a couple of more minutes to answer them. And remember, you can fill out the form if you have any topics which you struggle with.
Okay, since no one has any questions, I thank you everyone for attending today's session and I hope to see you next week.